everybody, Carl Larson here with the fourth and final episode of the After Effects tutorial series entitled Building a Cube World in After Effects. Last time we explored how to add a lens flare to our cube world that would automatically and interactively attach itself to the location of the sun. But this time, we'll be approaching the same shot using the plugin we've been emulating all along, Trapcode Horizon. So grab your mouse, some Twinkies, and a backpack full of makeshift climbing equipment, and I'll see you in the quarry. Now, starting over from scratch, composition, new composition, 720, that's great, we'll call this horizon. Enter OK. Double click in our project controls here, and just on the desktop, we'll grab our quarry image in the equirectangular format, and drop it into our timeline. Horizon just needs this layer to drive the effect, but we're actually not going to apply horizon to the layer. Instead, we'll go layer, new, solid, Make sure it's comp sized and call it horizon. And we'll go effect trap code horizon. There it is. Now, by default, horizon will actually create a gradient for you, and that's what this gray image showing up is. But in our case, we're going to use this image map instead. So we'll just choose the quarry park layer, and here's our image. That looks really zoomed in. So we'll go layer, new, camera, and uh, just show that this is camera where in. We'll just call it camera one, 15 millimeter preset. Okay. And now if we grab our orbit tool, we can start spinning our world around. Let it just load in here for a second. And we have our world just like we did in our cube world before. The problem that I kept running into is that no matter how I translate my camera, even if I hold down the shift key and move my camera from side to side, the perspective on the world never changes because Horizon creates an infinite world. And so I can't ever bump into the edges, and as a result, I have no idea what the coordinates of this position of the sun are, so I can't just create a basic expression to do that. But here's how we can get around that. First, let's reset the transform on our camera. Transform, reset, get it looking at the center of the world, select our horizon layer, and we're going to go to the orientation and distort box here, and we can just rotate our world to match what's going on horizon. So. Uh, X rotation, Y rotation. And we're going to put the sun at the very center of our scene. To dial this in a little more specifically, you can select the box and holding down the command or control key, depending on what platform you're on, you can dial this in to the tenth of the degree. So I'm just using the arrow keys with the command key on the Mac depressed. And I'm just going to center this up to be as close as I can to get it to the center of my world. To toggle on the guide that I'm using, it's just the, the key right next to your return key. So Whatever key you want to call that, toggle this on your guides, grids and guides, so you can really see what's going on. Now what we'll do is we'll use a null to drive the center of our flare, just like we did before. So layer, new, null object. And again, we'll select it, call it flare center, and press OK. Make it a 3D layer, and with the position property selected, we'll just push this really far away from the camera on the Z axis. So like 9999999, enter. And now it's lined up with our world, but just way far away from the camera. So we have an infinite world and now a null that's infinitely away from our camera. The next thing we need is our flare layer. So layer new solid, and we'll call this flare. Click OK and generate the flare just like we did before. So effect, generate flare, lens flare, effect, color correction, tritone. Just blast through this since you guys have done this before and effect null unmalt. There we go. So now we want to use an expression to put our 2D center of our lens flare effect to the 3D center of our null. Well, we should know how to do that at this point. Let's put a keyframe for the lens flare center. Press U on the keyboard. Option click to define a expression. Take the pick whip, drag it to the flare center null layers name, and then add in dot TO capital C-O-M-P, zero comma zero comma zero, close bracket, close parentheses. And now our flare is tracking to our world. We'll grab our camera orbit tool here and spin the world around, and it really is attached to the sun. That is great. The problem is, since we change the orientation of our world here, as we orbit around, our world kind of tilts on us funny. And uh, that's going to make animation really quite difficult. So we're going to need another null to correct our whole world view. Um, so we'll, let's reset our transformation again on our camera, just so we are uh, starting from a zero position. Transform, reset. And now I'll go layer, new, null object. 
turn it into a 3D layer, select it, and rename it World Offset. And press Enter to accept. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this World Offset, which is at the very center of our world, and create a relationship in between it and our flare center null, which is at the very edge of our world. It's going to act like a big swing arm on a pendulum. So however we change the orientation of our world offset null, the flare center null will come with it. And that's going to be a whole lot easier than trying to figure out what the actual vertical and horizontal offset are from that null. So going back into Horizon, let's set a keyframe for the X rotation, Y rotation, and Z rotation. All right, now we'll just do a little cleanup here before we start our expression. So we'll grab everything, press the U key to close everything, move the world offset null right by horizon. And on the offset null, we'll press R to reveal the rotation, and horizon, we'll press the U key to reveal the used properties. So now we can link an expression in between the rotation of this null and the offset that's happening in the horizon plugin. So option clicking on the X rotation for the world offset null, we'll type in a value, which is the value that it currently is minus, then grab the pick whip tool and drag it to the X rotation of the horizon null and let go. So now we have a relationship. You can see our null has rotated a little bit here, but our flare has remained in center. And now we're just going to copy this expression and option click on the Y rotation, paste this in and just change our value to instead of X rotation, we're going to change it to Y rotation. And same thing for the Z, so option click, paste, and change this to Z rotation. Now our flare is still in the right place, and our orientation of our world offset null has been corrected. So at this point, we'll grab our, we'll select everything again, press U to clean things up, U again to see what's going on, and we will parent the flare center null to the world offset null. Now back in Horizon, pressing the U key, we can set all of these back to zero. And our flare stays with it because of the expression that we wrote. So now if I orbit the world, my lens flare is attached to the, the sun and my world offsets appropriately. So we've pretty much done the shot here, but I want to show you one more thing because I think it's, it's just a whole lot easier in a situation like this to use a null in the center of the scene and then orbit our, uh, our camera around using that null. It's just uh, how I like to do it. And if you're going to operate that way, uh, there's one more kind of interesting expression step we need to link into it. So we'll go transform, reset, just make sure our camera's in the right spot, our flare is still in the right spot, this is great. We're going to add one more null called layer new null object, make it a 3D null layer, and we'll call this camera rotator. So normally what we do at this point in time is we'd grab our camera and parent it to the camera rotator null. Unfortunately, if we tool open the rotation properties on this and go for a little scrub here, we'll see that the flare does not come with. So we need to make a change. Basically what's going on in our scene is we have multiple nulls driving the orientation of our world. And right now they're not all interrelated. So we need to just modify the expression that we're using on the world offset null to have some type of compensation for the camera rotator null. So with the world offset null selected, press the U key to reveal our used properties. And then we'll bring the camera rotator null just right next to it to keep things simple. What we need to do is somehow make a relationship in between these two nulls. Right now, the expression says that take whatever value we have and subtract the X rotation of the horizon effect. So that's reorienting our world but it doesn't know how to compensate for the rotation of this camera rotator null. Well, it's pretty simple. We just need to go minus and then pick whip up to the rotation value of interest and then divide it all by 360. So add in a parentheses on both ends and accept it. Now when we rotate our scene, everything works. So let's, uh, let's go down and make sure that we have the same thing here. So minus pick whip to the Y, get some parentheses in here, divided by 360, and repeat it one last time. So minus parentheses, 
pick whip to the X rotation divided by 360 parentheses. Now we can take and rotate our scene any way we want using the null. For good measure, let's add in a text layer. We'll just call it placeholder. And make sure it's a 3D layer. And then scale it up. And we can see, now rotating the orientation of this null, that we've got a 3D layer, our camera aware plugin, and a tracking lens flare all in our scene. This is looking great. Now that we've got everything hooked up, you'll still want to add in some titles, play with the color, and add in maybe a final lens flare or two. But I'll leave it up to you to make a great looking animation. Well there you have it. Two ways to create the same animation. One using a cube world, and the other using Trapcode Horizon. I'll let you be the judge of which is the best method that fits your needs. Either way, it's now up to you to make something incredible. Until next time, I'm Carl Larson for creativecal.net.